Okay. This is the third class of the ethics series. And I call this class common sense and nonsense. We find that in our profession, there are many moral issues, safety issues, honesty issues, and acceptable and non-acceptable behavior that we need to adhere to. Elga Antonio said, and I 100% agree with her on this, I believe that ethics has a lot to do with integrity, character, and common sense. Now, if you are participating in this class for the purpose of being hired by an agency, I'd suggest you take it real seriously. As your failure to adhere to any of these policies will result in your immediate dismissal from the position and your inability to be rehired with this agency. We would also like to remind you that failure to comply with these common issue or safety issues may result in your inability to find employment in the NCS community. Please remember, this is a small community. It is growing bigger every day, but it is still a small community. And when you do something, somebody knows and somebody unfortunately is going to share the news which is one of the points we're going to talk about however please keep that in mind when you do something that is non-acceptable behavior let's start out with accepting or participating in any alcoholic beverages while on the job this includes offers from the clients. Oh, I just offered, uh, opened a bottle of wine. Could I give you a glass? And you say, oh, no, thank you. And they say, oh, one glass won't hurt anything. We don't mind. Go ahead and do it. The answer is 100% no. I always tell my clients, you do not want to see me after I've had one glass of wine, which is a true statement because I am a not drinker. And so one glass of wine would, first of all, make me really loopy and then I'd fall asleep and um, don't want to go there. That also includes drinking their vodka and filling the bottle up with water. That does not go well either. I had one lady who did that. Obviously she was caught and she was fired uh, and her reputation was ruined. And she is no longer working in the NCS field as, as far as I know. Uh, the second point is falling asleep while feeding or holding a baby. Now, I know we're working nights, so we have to be very careful about getting enough rest during the day so we don't fall asleep while holding or feeding a baby. Now, yes, we do rest while the baby is resting, completely acceptable but you have to be able to be woken up when the baby fusses or even I wake up when they grunt and groan. So you have to be able to be that alert. So we do what's called light sleeping at night. And we are very aware of what is going on when we are sleeping. There has only been one instance in my 30 year career where I have slept through a baby crying and I can even justify it, of course. Um, and that was because I had been next to the baby's room. And so my ear was attuned to that, but they had company. So they moved me to the other side of the house and my ear was not attuned to that. And I got a knock on the door. Nancy, did you know the baby's crying? I was like, oh my goodness. That's the only time that ever happened. And thank goodness this was my second baby uh, because they knew that I was very, very alert and I knew what I was doing. So they said, you know, that was one time was okay. It never happened again, ever happened again. So do not go to work tired or sleepy. Make sure that you had a good rest during the day and you are ready and willing to work all night awake if you have to. There are, I know we don't do awake duty, but there are nights when we go to work that that baby is fussy all night long. 
and you have to be able to deal with that. That is your job. That's what you're being paid the big bucks for. Uh, never leave a baby unattended unless they're in their crib or in their bassinet. Babies may not be left alone on the changing table, in the bath, on the floor, or any place that is not a sleeping area where you practice safe sleep. You may not leave a baby alone to grab a towel, a diaper, a wet one, a bottle, to answer your phone or to the open the door for the client. If for some reason mom is knocking on the door and can't get in, you'll have to tell her, wait just a minute, let me grab the baby, I'll be right there. I don't know why the door would be locked to the nursery anyway, but you'd never, ever, ever leave the baby alone. You may not even turn around and talk to somebody, even the mom, while you are attending the baby. If you do have to turn around, maybe she says, hey, look at this. You put one hand on the baby, securing the baby, and then you can turn your head. This is so important. People do not realize how fast things can happen. Um, number four, you do not talk or text or video chat on your phone when the baby is awake. Never. You do not leave the area to speak on your phone unless you have a monitor with you. So let's just say the baby is sleeping and you are on duty and um, you get a text message or something that you have to handle outside of the baby's room. So you take the monitor with you and you step out of the room. My personal opinion is a phone has no business on the job, but I know that that's not a popular belief, but I don't think it does. A phone should be used for emergency reasons only, and you should not be texting, chatting, uh, surfing the, the web, looking at TikTok, whatever the heck you do, playing games on your phone while you're working. That's your job. You are there to care for the baby. You're not there to play on your phone and talk on with your buddies. And you're not there for that reason. Um, and you do not leave the area without the express permission of your client. And that goes for a day or nighttime position. So let's say that you are, um, let's just say that you have, some, sometimes you have a wing of the house that is yours that you have the baby in and that part of the house is yours. So just let's say that you have, um, um, you need to go downstairs to get your lunch. We'll just say you have to go downstairs to get your lunch. So what you need to do is text mom and say, I am leaving the nursery to go downstairs to get lunch. Do you wanna watch the monitor? Or you take the monitor with you when you're going downstairs to grab your lunch. You never leave the baby unattended. That is your job to be with the baby, to stay with the baby at all times. Um, okay, let's talk about contracts. I'm gonna jump back and forth from, from safety issues to, uh, to common sense issues to bad behavior issues. So it, I don't have this in any special category order, but we're gonna talk about contracts now. And I can't tell you how essential it is for you to have a contract. Use your head, you're going on a job and you need to know what the rules are. You need them to know what the rules are. You need them to know how long you're going to be there. You need you to know how long you're going to be there. You need a contract. Um, and this is not a contract that you wrote unless you're very legal minded. You need to have a lawyer write the contract or get a, a contract from a professional who knows how to write contracts. It can literally save you thousands of dollars because there are times when people are going to violate the contract. Okay. And you may need to sue for the contract. 
If it is not a good solid contract, you will not be able to get your, your money out of it. Um, actually, I sell, Gentle Ventures sells a contract that is one of the best contracts in the industry. And I stand behind it. I've had multiple lawyers look at it and approve it. So I'd strongly suggest if you, if you get to the point where you need a contract that you go to gentleventures.com and um, buy a contract. They're very, very reasonable. Uh, don't be so foolish to use a contract that you did not personally buy. If you're found out, you'll be sued by the person who is selling the contract, using or sharing a contract is a violation of US law and potentially punishable by fines and other criminal penalties. Also be aware that they will not hesitate to press charges if you should violate this right by sharing or selling a contract that is not yours to sell. When you purchase a contract, whether it be from a lawyer or perhaps through Gentle Ventures, it is yours and yours alone never to be shared, never to be copied. Any agency who wants to use a, a contract for their NCS or nanny must receive permission in writing from the person or company that created the contract. Most of the contracts are written for individuals and not written for an agency. Uh, Gentle Ventures does not have an agency contract. We only have individual contracts. Uh, if you fail to honor a contract by not showing up or not adhering to the letter of the contract, you will be dismissed immediately. And if you received a retainer, it must be returned immediately, unless the reason for leaving was stated in a contract cause clause. Now, there are reasons that you can legally leave a contract. Uh, and I, I'm not going to go through, I'm not going to go through those reasons now because that's not uh, pertinent to what we're talking about. Just want you to be aware that when you have a contract, you are so much more protected. And I would strongly, strongly suggest you do not overlook this expense. It's not that much. And it can save you a lifetime of heartache. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, never feed a baby an unauthorized bottle. If the baby is to be breastfed, do not substitute formula. Even if you think the baby's still hungry, this is not your call. If you feel the baby is in danger of dehydration or starvation, contact the agency that hired you or your mentor, but never take on authorized action. You may have a client sign a waiver to release you from any fault if the baby dies or is hospitalized. If they do not sign a waiver and will not feed the baby, call Child Protective Services, um, you are, once you're on a job, you are a mandated reporter and you are um, required to report any baby that is in danger. Um, <laughs> a dream feed may only be administered with the complete and total support and cooperation of the client. A dream feed disrupts sleep. And there are many clients who are not, who do not want dream feeds done, but there's many NCSs who think to themselves, if I feed this baby now, I'm gonna get a good three hours of sleep before he wakes up again. Unethical can get you in a lot of trouble, don't do it. A dream feed must be authorized 
by the client. Okay. <laughs> my favorite one, this is not your baby. This is my favorite one. This is not your baby. I understand you're very connected with this child because you care for him every day. However, I'm gonna put it real bluntly to you, you are the hired help. You are not that child's mother. You do not love that child like the mother loves the child, even though you think you do. The baby is not your responsibility. They are the parent's responsibility. The parents make the best decision that they can and it does not matter whether you agree or not. It is their decision as to what is to be done. If you cannot deal with that, you don't need to go any further with this, with this job stuff because you will never make it. There are uh, parental decisions that are going to drive you crazy. And you're gonna be like, I cannot let this happen. This is not good for this baby. But unless the baby is in physical danger, it is not your decision. Um, you have to learn how to deal with things like this. Now, once again, if the baby is in any kind of physical danger, please feel free to call the um, Child Protective Services or the agency who hired you to discuss it with them. The one thing that you can do is educate the parents. Let's say that they want to, um, that they have the, the temperature set at 85 and the baby wrapped up in, in uh, wool blankets. And you're like, this is gonna hurt the baby. You can't do this. The baby's gonna overheat. So you educate them on safe sleep practices on the temperature of the room. You show them uh, articles, you show them proof that what you're saying is the way it needs to be. Now, let's say that you've told them all this and you come in the next day and the temperature is 85 and the baby is wrapped in a whole bunch of blankets. You get out your little pen paper and create a waiver that says that you are not responsible should this baby die from overheating and what you have done to educate them and that they have decided not to do it and they must sign this. If they don't sign it, you need to head for the door because when that baby dies, if that baby dies, they will look at you and you will be responsible because you are the professional. You are the one that's supposed to know this stuff. And they will say, oh, I didn't know that it could lead to the baby's death. But if they sign a waiver that says that, then you are scot-free. I mean, there, you can't do anything more than what the parents tell you to do. Um, and, and the next thing that you have to do, once you do all that stuff, is let it go. Once you have the waiver signed and you walk in and it's, the house is still 85 degrees and the baby's still wrapped up in all these things, you just have to let it go. You either walk out the door or let it go. You can never take enough continuing education. I don't care if you go to 55 classes every year, you cannot take enough continuing education. There's always something to learn. There's always improvements. There's always things that are, are um, happening that they are resolving um, products that can cannot be used. Continuing education never hurt anyone. All it's going to do is up your market marketability. Marketability is that a word? Up your marketability. I'm not sure that's a word, but we're going to we're going to make it a word if it's not. Make you more marketable. People are going to see your resume with all this continuing education on there. And they're going to say, wow, she's really into this baby stuff. She really knows what she's doing. Um, okay. No, 
Here's a good one. Remember, never give medical advice. Medical advice is anything that you say that they can take to mean this is how it needs to be done. Okay, let me let me just um, back this up a little bit. <clears throat> this is the illustration I always use. So if you've heard it before, just grin and bear it. <clears throat> so your uh, first day on the job and the mom says, uh, Nancy, what's your recommendation for diapers? And you say, I like Pampers. Pampers are best. So mom goes out and buys Pampers. And the Pampers cause a rash. And you can't get rid of the rash. So take the baby to the doctor. The doctor gives mom some ointment. The ointment doesn't get rid of the rash. Pretty soon the rash gets infected. Pretty soon the baby ends up in the hospital with the infection from the rash caused by the diapers that you recommended. The rash cannot be controlled and the baby dies. Who do you think the parents are gonna come back on to blame for that baby's death? They're gonna come back to you because you said pampers are what you should, they're the best diapers I, I know. Instead, you need to always say, in my opinion, my last client found, or after doing some research, I found, however, please ask your pediatrician before you do anything. So my correct answer to their question of um, what diapers should I choose should have been, in my opinion, I have found that Pampers work pretty well. However, I would ask my pediatrician what his opinion is. Very simple. You did not tell her to do it that. You did not give her medical ad advice. You said, in my opinion. So that takes it out of the medical advice territory. Okay. Let's see what our next point of fun is. Um, <laughs> I like this one. I don't like this one. This one really makes me angry. Um, and if you're a person that does this, I admonish you to stop and do better. Sabotaging a baby's sleep schedule so that you can stretch out your employment. This makes me so angry. And it's so clear. It's clear as day to me when I talk to some client who says to me, I've had a, a baby nurse, they call them baby nurses. I've had a baby nurse now for six months and the baby still isn't sleeping through the night. And I'm like, that's not possible. You are being hoodwinked. I don't even know if that's a word anymore. So what the lady, what the person at night is doing is continuing to feed the baby throughout the night so that the baby will not sleep through the night so that she'll have a job for another month or two or three. I have left one job in my 30 years on a 12 week position where the baby was not sleeping from seven to seven. One job. And usually it's at 10 weeks, but always by 12 weeks. Now, I understand there's some of you here that are like, oh, that's too early. We have to make it four months or we have to make it six months. Okay, if you make it four months, then put that contract out for four months. You're gonna have the baby sleeping through the night at four months. Do not have them sign a 12 week contract and then say, oh, the baby just isn't ready. He needs another month. So I'll have to, you know, you'll have to hire me for another month. You know, but that's a bunch of crap and that's taken advantage of clients and that is unacceptable. That is totally unacceptable. I hate it when people take advantage of other people and that is exactly what you're doing when you do that. Don't do it. Okay. Um, safety issues. 
uh, encouraging the use and practices of equipment that are not FDA or American, uh, American Academy of Pediatrics, AAP approved, including sleep safe practices. If you don't know what those guidelines are, contact me and we will go through the list. There are so many practices that are safety issues when you go on the job. Um, and there are so many people that think that they know better and do not follow these safety practices. And somebody's going to end up getting hurt, and it's probably going to be you. So don't do it. Know what the safety issues are, know what the safety practices are, know what equipment can and cannot be used. The DACA is no longer, well, no longer, it never was a good sleeping implement. There are the, the little hammock that they string from side to side in the crib is not safe sleeping. Tummy sleeping is not safe sleeping. So understand and know all the safe sleeping rules and all the other safety issues um, that need to be adhered to while you're on the job. <laughs> Never ever place a baby on their stomach to sleep. The only way, the only time that you may do this is if with the doctor's written permission. Now there are babies that get reflux and we know that babies with reflux sleep better on their tummies. It feels better to them. Um, so mom would have to go to the doctor and get the doctor's written permission to sleep the baby on their tummy. You cannot sleep a swaddled baby on their tummy. They will die. You cannot do it. Baby has to be able to be out of the swaddle to be on their tummy. Oh, goodness gracious. Don't give the babies any products that encourage sleep, such as melatonin. Um, I just lost my place. Just a minute. Melatonin was, or Benadryl. Oh, good grief. Or any other medication that induces sleep in a child. Don't be a fool. Don't be stupid. You can poison a child. You can overdose a child. Don't do it. If you're going to give a baby Benadryl, for instance, I don't think you can even give it to them under the age of two. I have no words for people that do things like this. I have no words. Melatonin is never to be given to a child, ever to be given to a child. The body produces melatonin naturally. Uh, you all know that I'm very, very much into health and into holistic. There are holistic things that you can do. For instance, you could um, give the baby a bath with a couple drops of lavender essential oil in the bath. That would relax the baby and calm the baby down. There are some natural remedies that can be used that do not hurt a baby, but basically calm them down and allow them to fall asleep. And you can take my holistic class if you need to know those, or you can contact me and we'll talk about it. I'm always available to my students. Um, do not discuss your personal life with the client under any circumstances. Oh my God, under no circumstances. They do not need to know your problems. They're dealing with a new baby and they have issues of their own to deal with. They don't want to hear that you ran over your dog or your husband left you or your husband's boyfriend's girlfriend 
is trying to call you. None of that needs to happen. Um, this is one of the biggest professional things that you can do is to not discuss your personal issues. I cannot even emphasize how important it is not to talk about your personal life ever, ever. I know some of you are like, oh, but she was like my best friend. Bull pucky. You are the hired help. I understand that some of you have good relationships with the people that you work for. And you can have good relationships with them without sharing your personal life. I have had more clients come to me and tell me, here's what my NCS told me. And I'm like, she told you that? What was she thinking? Did she think that you would think that you, you were a better person because of that? Or because you're compassionate because of that? Or because you're, you're poor? And it's like unbelievable what people tell their clients. Don't tell them anything. When you, when you walk in at night, you say to the client, how was your day? How was the baby's day? And if they say to you, how was your day? You say, my day was great. I don't care if you had the day from hell. I don't care what happened to you that day. My day was great. Thank you. How was the baby's day? That is the extent of the personal information you share with your client. Um, don't go to work if you're sick. Don't go to work if you have a fever, if you have a cold. Um, if you have the flu, if you have COVID, oh my God, I know that there are NCSs out there with COVID that are going to work. I know this for a fact. You could be sued for everything you have going to work sick and causing them to get sick and causing one of them to end up in the hospital and causing one of them to die or maybe even just for their hospital bills, maybe just for their doctor bills. You do not go to work sick. If I have the sniffles, I will call my client and I will say, I seem to be coming down with a cold. Do you want me to come to work? If I come to work, I will be wearing a mask and I will be washing my hands continually, but I am fine not coming to work. It is your choice. And honestly, I haven't had a client tell me in the past not to come to work. Now with COVID, I haven't worked very much in the last couple of years uh, simply because I am retiring. Um, but before that, I had not had a client say, don't come to work if you got a cold. But I always masked up. I always washed my hands continually. And I was also very careful around the baby. Uh, I got more colds from the baby, but I never gave a baby a cold that I had. Uh, don't exaggerate your experience level. If you're a newbie, fess up. Drop your rates a little bit. Get the experience. But don't say, oh, yeah, I've taken care of lots of babies, and then walk into a home and say, is this what a baby looks like? Come on, ladies. Use some common sense. If you don't have the experience, go in unexperienced and work with mom. Have mom work with you by your side. Go in with another NCS and shadow them. Drop your rates a little bit until you have a job or two under your belt. And you can say, I have experience and be proud about it. Next page. Um, don't claim you've taken a course and are certified if you're not. Oh my goodness, that's so easy to check. Do you know how many calls I get from clients? Calls, texts, emails. Does so and so uh, have a certificate from you? They claim that they have a cert uh, certification from you. And I'm always like, 
No, I do not give out certifications. I give out completion certificates. It means that they took the course. I do not certify people. Don't claim you're certified unless you have gone through the NCSA and gotten your certification. Oh, and there are a couple other certification entities that are completely legal. And, but no course like General Ventures cannot certify. You have to go through another entity to become certified. Certification is a huge deal. It's a wonderful thing to have. It shows that you are experienced, that you are professional, that you have been background checked, reference checked. It gives you a whole big umbrella of security. But if you claim that you're certified and have and your clients call me and say, I understand. I've even had clients call me with a certificate of completion in their hand and say, is this your certificate? And does it mean my, my person is certified? And I'm like, that is my certificate. It means they took the course. It does not mean they're certified. It doesn't mean they have uh, experience. It doesn't mean that they have references. It just means that they took a course with me. Don't lie about that. You will get busted and your name will get out there as somebody who is claiming to be certified and is not. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> Never be critical of your client's lifestyle. So we just had a case where an NCS went to work for a client. They were paying her $700 or $750 a day. So they had the money. And they lived in a little tiny <clears throat> house in the country with linoleum floors and white appliances. There were more or less hippies. And the NCS couldn't deal with it. It was below her standards. They were the most gracious people. They were so happy she was there. But she couldn't deal with their lifestyle. She changed the furniture around in their house, did change the stuff in her cupboards redid their drawers because she didn't think it was up to her standards. Needless to say, she got fired by the agency. You don't do things like that. If you do, when you go on an interview, if the living conditions are not what you like, don't take the job. Now, we know there's many germophobics out there and germophobes sometimes they're, they're one way or the other. Their houses are either immaculate or they're so afraid of germs that they don't touch anything and the whole house is disgustingly filthy. If you come into a place where that is the case, you do not clean the house for them you do not rearrange anything to make th their life easier. You either do not take the job or you live in the conditions that they already have. You may not, you may not clean their house. <sighs> okay, a logical reason for you not cleaning their house would be because if you clean their house, they will expect you to continue it the next day. I had an NCS that actually walked into condition like that. This, the kitchen was piled with dirty dishes. It was, the floor was sticky. It was the, a mess, the trash hadn't been taken out. They were germaphobes, they were afraid to touch anything. So she went in there and she washed all the dishes, she mopped the floor, she emptied the garbage. And the next day that she came, they had a list of things for her to do. 
Could you please scrub out the toilets? Could you please clean the bathtub? Could you please? It, the list went on and on and on. So then how do you get out of that? Because you've already started doing something that was not in your contract. Now you're expected to complete it, to finish it, to continue it. Don't get yourself in that mess. If you look at the area that you're supposed to be working in and you cannot deal with it, don't take the job. If you interview for the job, let's say you interview at Starbucks, that has happened before, and then you get to the house and it's in that kind of disarray, you, I think there is a clause in the contract that lets you out. Uh, something to the effect of working in conditions that are below the standard cleanliness conditions. Um, so you may want to activate that clause and back out of the contract. I can tell you right now, I mean, there have been only, there has only been one job that I have gone on into where I was like, I got to have my shoes on before I get out of the bed. And if I get in the bed, I have to check under the sheets to make sure that there's nothing living under there. Um, and I, I never did it again. One time was enough for me. So please don't try to change your lifestyle, but beware but be aware of what it is and if you can work on a job like that. Um, mm, let me think if there's anything else about that. Oh, oh, that does include the nursery. That does include the nursery. You can keep the nursery organized if that's part of your contract and clean if that's part of your contract. But if it's not, you are not to touch it. You are not to change it. You are not to move things around. No. Okay. Don't co-sleep with the baby. Oh my goodness, people. So the baby went not sleep last night. So I just took it in bed with me. And we both slept so well all night. Do you know what would happen if a client walked in the room and the baby was in bed with you? That is one of the big safe sleep issues. If the baby is gonna co-sleep with somebody, it better be the parents. It better not be you. Now, I'm not saying that I have never taken a baby in bed with me. If I have a baby that's having a really, really hard night, I will be in my bed, sitting up in my bed, probably resting with, uh, on the headboard with the baby right here and maybe rocking back and forth like this to get the baby to calm down. And when the baby is sound asleep, he goes right back in the bed. So I'm not saying I don't ever get in bed with the baby, but I do not co-sleep with a baby. You don't do that. Oh my goodness. Some of these things to me are such common sense things. And I realize that not everybody has that ability to have common sense. Um, <laughs> when you begin a job, honor your contract. Don't all of a sudden, I know this happens all the time. I'm four weeks into my contract and I got an offer that pays $10 an hour more than I'm getting right now. So I told my client that personal issues have come up and I can no longer continue the contract, but I'll get somebody to fill for me. You are a bunch of bullshit. And you should not be working this job. You honor your contracts. You don't flit from job to job just because you get paid more at one job than you're getting paid now. You finish out that contract and raise your rate. If you're going to be able to get more, then raise your rate. 
You do not hire, you do not take a job and then find a fill-in because the job is too rough for you. Or you don't think that you're being appreciated enough. You honor your contract. That's what integrity is about. In my class, you have homework to do. And a couple of the questions involve integrity and what you would do if you already signed a contract and you got a better offer. What would you do? And I will fail your butt if you do not honor the first contract that you signed. It's just not right. Okay. Um, the baby is your priority. The baby is your only priority. The baby is your job. At all times, you need to be attentive to the baby. If the baby is crying, you need to know why. You need to be on top of why, not just let's close the bedroom door and maybe nobody else will hear and the baby will go to sleep. There are times when that is necessary uh, for reasons that we've already gone through in class. But just because you have a phone call you need to make, or just because it's your lunchtime and you feel like eating and you don't want to deal with the baby, uh, those are not reasons not to be totally attentive to the baby. Baby comes first. I can talk to you as soon as I've calmed this baby down. I will go down and get my sandwich as soon as the baby is sleeping. Baby always comes first. You also need to always be straight with the client, honest with the client. If things don't go well during the night, put it in the log. Don't try to sugarcoat things. You, if I tell my clients everything, everything that happens. And you know what? They trust me explicitly because they know that I will always be honest with them. I will tell them, baby slept all night. Isn't that great? Or he was miserable all last night. It might have been something he ate. Let's investigate that. Or um, he was up every hour and a half and it was a really hard night last night. Or I let him cry 10 minutes instead of seven because he seemed to be getting used to the seven minute cry. So even when I'm sleep training or sleep conditioning a baby, if a little bit of crying is involved, I put down how much they cry. I don't sugarcoat anything because the chances are they can hear that. And mama's sitting there looking at her watch saying, okay, he cried seven minutes. I wonder what Nancy's gonna put down in the log. Well, Nancy's gonna put down seven minutes. No doubt, never ever try to um, hoodwink him. I never do that. I'm always honest. So always be honest with your clients. Um, if you're job sharing, don't speak badly or negatively about the other NCS. If you've got a problem with it, bring it up to her. There should always be one person on the job who is the lead. And the other person should follow the lead. If they can't follow the lead, they shouldn't be there. If the lead is doing things that are unethical, I would probably suggest that you bring it up to the agency that you're working with or your mentor, and you can talk it out and figure out what you need to do about it. It depends on what, what unethical is. Um, there's some unethical that I would say we need to we need to bring the parents in on this conversation. So it really depends on exactly what that is. Um,
if you are going to bring up an issue with the other NCS, make sure that you have proof. Make sure you have like texts or video or emails or somebody else has seen what this NCS is doing. Um, don't just go with your word and say, here's what's, here's what's happening and you, so you need to believe me. Um, that's probably not gonna happen, especially if the lead NCS has been there longer than you have. If it's detrimental to the baby's health, especially then you need to bring it up to the agency, a mentor or to the clients in particular. Also, what you say needs to stay with you and whoever you tell it to. This is not for public announcements. We're not gonna tell the world, we're not gonna post it on Facebook. Um, sometimes people need a break. Sometimes people make mistakes. So use your best judgment, but we're not gonna gossip about it. We're not gonna be uh, backstabbing about it. We're not gonna be telling people stories about it. Um, most of the things that I have talked to you about in this video were given to me from a post in the NCS Mentor Me group where I said, I would like to know unethical things that people do because I needed to make a class about it. No names were mentioned uh, as to who was doing this stuff. Um, so just, if you have issues, bring them to somebody in authority that can actually do something about them or keep them to yourself. Don't go telling all your other NCS friends. If you're on a team, please do your part of the jobs. Be a team. Do things. Everybody does their portion. Everybody does their part. There's not one person that gets brought in that they're like, oh, let's give her everything. Let's give her the, the night duty. Let's give her the this duty. Let's give her the reflux duty. Let's give her this duty. Each of you have your own job to perform at a specific time, usually, if you're on a team follow your lead. Don't sabotage what's going on in the nursery. And um, be gracious, be kind. Be a human being. We are getting close to the end, believe it or not. Um, let me see here. You are a professional on a job. If you're working 24 seven, for instance, you're gonna be interacting with the family a lot. You may not wear your pajamas or your robe or a towel on your head in the presence of family members. You may not go down to the kitchen to grab your breakfast in your robe or your pajamas or a towel wrapped around your head. Keep things professional. If you are helping mom in the middle of the night with breastfeeding, you do not have your pajamas on, you have scrubs on, or you have whatever you're wearing during the night that is not pajamas. No pajamas, no robe. You wear scrubs, you wear a uniform, you wear I don't even know what you do besides scrubs and a uniform. Those are your only two choices. When I, when I work 24 seven, which I'm getting ready to go and do probably within the week during the day. And I've talked to them about this. So I know that this is okay with them. I will be wearing street clothes, um, which means a nice pair of leggings or a nice pair of jeans and a sweater or um, something like that. You never wear crop tops, you never wear short shorts, uh, you never wear short skirts. You don't do that kind of stuff, it's not professional. And then at night, I always wear scrubs. So when my scrubs go on, which is right around seven o'clock, they know it's nighttime, that I'm on now on nighttime duty. And I will wear scrubs, of course, so that when I get up in the middle of the night, if I have to bring the baby to mom, I have my scrubs on. I look decent. I'm not in my, 
fuzzy robe and my big slippers. None of that is acceptable. You are a professional. Please act like a professional. Um, I think this pretty much wraps up what I wanted to say, and I'm sure there's a lot more instances that we could talk about. And I'm hoping that you've gotten a glimpse of what common sense items are and what safety issues are and what is acceptable and what's not acceptable in being a professional. I hope that you feel free to call me 602-412-8497. If you have any questions about any of this, I am quite passionate about being professional as you may have been able to tell. And I can sometimes use bad language, which now I apologize for. Um, but these are things that are so important to our community, for us as NCSs to be professional, not to backstab, not to take advantage of our clients, to be gracious, to be loving, to be a gift to our clients, to be a gift to the world. We, as a community, offer a marvelous, amazing service. So let's not, let's not degrade it by acting unprofessional. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening to me and um, have a great future.